I've received more requests for this video than anything else over the past three weeks or so. So let's speak about the real estate bubble and realistically what we could most likely expect over the next 12 months because a lot has changed since I released this video right here. And in that video, I had mentioned the fact that interest rates along with supply and demand would undoubtedly have massive impacts on the market value of real estate, both in the mid to short term, and they sure have. If you're new here, my name's Griffin, by the way, and I'm a real estate investor as well as homeowner. So I'm constantly keeping an eye on the real estate market. It. If that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You won't regret it. If you weren't already aware of this, real estate actually represents the largest asset class worldwide in terms of market value. And so anyone who owns a home, a cottage, rental properties, or any other form of property is invested in real estate, meaning everything that we'll be speaking about today has and will impact the value of these assets. And over the past 2.5 years, we have seen unprecedented gains in regards to the value on property in most areas of the United States and Canada, which is mainly attributed to an increase of buying power due to very low interest rates in parallel to extremely high demand and very low supply. I'll just get to the chase though. Although average property values are still sitting well above where they were in 2020, we have actually seen property prices across Canada specifically cooling off already quite a bit, down roughly 13%, uh, representing around $100,000 from recent highs achieved only a couple of months back. The problem with looking at have very broad data like we just looked over though is that this of course takes into account all different property types as well as various different geographic areas so this represents you know not necessarily an apples to apples comparison right because a duplex say in montreal is not going to be valued the same as a townhome or let's say condo in vancouver or toronto in fact if we do drill down a bit and look at specific value charts for toronto vancouver montreal and ottawa we can see that average sold prices haven't yet felt the effects of lowered buying power to the same degree as some of these smaller markets and the new housing index still remains higher than ever. I've also said this before but average values is typically not necessarily representative of what's going on nationwide because some of the larger markets let's say for example Vancouver and Toronto are going to skew the average values upwards because a large portion of the population is concentrated in these areas where values appreciate significantly more. So instead using what's known as the house price index or HPI for short is a much better gauge of really what's going on in the country in regards to the housing market uh, because this is going to adjust adequately for different geographic regions and the density of population but then also taking into account uh, the volume of transactions per area as well as the type of property in question so looking at the difference between condos townhomes for example single family homes multifamilies etc and that being said as I look at the data here for the HPI well we can see that uh, it has actually dropped by 0.8% in May, and that's following a 1.1% decrease in April. But even still, considering this small drop right now, uh, this is still sitting 19% higher than it was this time last year in May of 2021. Uh, so let's keep things into perspective for now. By the way, this is also a phenomenon that we are experiencing down in the United States, where even though interest rates having increased has undoubtedly impacted the demand for mortgages, right? Looking at the data, we're seeing uh, that mortgage demand and refinance financing demands are down multiple double digit figures. Uh, this is completely normal though, because the overall buying power is a lot lower. That being said, how this is translated over into actual property prices coming down, well, specifically in certain cities where both job as well as population growth are still quite high, uh, above average, for example, these cities are able to still maintain, at least for now, higher price points because the demand is still extremely high relative to the supply on the market. Nonetheless, the macroeconomic environment that we found ourselves in over the past three years or so have absolutely made it a lot harder for specifically first-time homebuyers and people who don't yet own property to finally get into the market, buy that first investment property, or even buy that first home. And this has a lot of people anticipating a real estate crash that is most likely or could be on the horizon. So let's actually speak about some of this data in more detail, starting with how interest rates actually tend to impact the value of property, but then also the monthly running costs of a property. All right, so let's first speak about increased interest rates because this really is the element that has a lot of people uh, believing will result in a real estate crash. Now, before we actually look at how increased interest rates ends up impacting buying power, let's take a look at this chart right here, which as we can see over the past roughly four decades or so, we can kind of see that interest rates, although you would think has a very strong correlation with the value of real estate, doesn't actually have as much of a correlation as you might come to believe, which I find is extremely 
quite interesting and we'll see how this ends up playing out over the next 12 to 24 months. Ironically though, it's low interest rates combined with much higher liquidities in the market and the economy in the first place that have resulted in such a large increase in asset values in the first place, right? But now has resulted in 8.6% year over year inflation levels. And so the Fed and Bank of Canada deal with this issue by, well, raising interest rates. And that ends up decreasing the relative buying power that consumers and future potential buyers would have when it comes to buying a property, right? But the thing is, uh, decreased housing prices doesn't necessarily actually make them more affordable on a month to month basis, which I think a lot of people are failing to realize. Here's an example to illustrate this point. Okay, so let's say you had a house, the average house costing $800,000 a couple of months back, all right? Uh, and someone who were to purchase that house with 20% down over 25 year period, right? The mortgage uh, length of the term would be 25 years uh, with a 2% interest rate, which realistically is something that was achievable a couple of months back. I actually managed to secure a five year fixed rate at 1.8% on this property. Regardless, that would mean monthly payments of roughly $2,700 per month on that example. And example number two here, let's say fast forward to an actual property crash where we're seeing average property values coming down, let's say 25%, okay? Keep in mind right now, as we looked at the data earlier, we're down roughly 13% from recent highs that we had achieved nation high, all right? This would mean property values at around $600,000 coming down from 800K, which yes, is very inflated. Uh, but to get there in the first place, realistically, uh, we'd most likely be seeing fixed rate, five-year mortgage interest rates in around the, I would say 7% rate, considering the fact that right now we're looking at interest rates that are around four or 5% depending on your credit, right? That would mean 20% down on a $600,000 house though, to be apples apples comparison to earlier, you're still looking at a monthly payment of roughly $3,400, which happens to be, you know, what is that $700 more uh, on a house, the same house that's roughly $200,000 less in market value. So I really just wanted to highlight this example to illustrate the fact that in an economic environment where uh, demand is still very high, but interest rates are largely contributing to values of properties coming down. Well, this doesn't mean increased home affordability though on a month to month like cash flow standpoint out of your pocket. You're most likely still going to be paying a higher month to month amount. Of course, increased interest rates does directly impact purchasing power though. So at a certain point, there's like a breaking point where uh, everyday people aren't able to just continue uh, bidding up the value of properties. In fact, this is something we've seen cool down a lot where, you know, a couple of months back, we were seeing properties going to $300,000 over, huge bidding war. That is something that we're not really seeing anymore. So this has very much stabilized the market. And again, in certain places, we're seeing average prices come down around 13%. That being said though, demand is still much higher than the current inventory and supply that's on the market. And so that's why right now, I don't really see property prices crashing as many people are expecting. Regardless though, if you've been following my channel for a while, you would know that in no way, shape or form, have I ever thought that this made any sense whatsoever, especially on a primary residence that is somewhat of a liability depending on how you're approaching it. And if you're bidding two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 over, uh, you're pretty much like 99% of the chances that this is going to be a pure liability on your balance sheet. If you were purchasing a property that was say under market value, and then you're actually renovating it yourself and increasing the market value, we're talking about a completely different uh, situation, but that is really not the case for most individuals. All that being said, first, for now, yes, we are seeing a pretty large cool off actually in most large metropolitan areas across the country and also in the United States. Actually though, where I think or when I think there is going to be a much larger impact in the market in terms of property values is gonna be in two to three years. Reason being, this is when most people are going to be up for renewal on their mortgages, that five year mortgage where you know uh, over the past two years or so, people were able to lock in extremely low interest rates and therefore their actual purchasing power was a lot higher. Fast forward two, three years when people are up for renewal, if we do see uh, actual interest rates in the seven, eight percent range, this could very well increase monthly spending up a thousand dollars even. And for a lot of people, that is going to be a huge amount uh, of increased expenses, ongoing expenses that might not become affordable. And then we may see inventory going up quite a bit. Right now though, and until then, inventory is still extremely low and I don't see any way as to how that could increase in the short term. That being said, where home affordability has really become out of hand is mainly actually in two markets being Vancouver and Toronto. So 
taking a look at this chart right here, we can see the relative home affordability in, again, Toronto and Vancouver relative to Canada as a whole. And also in this case, we have Montreal. Now we can see that right now, as of 2020, home affordability in these two metropolitan areas is as high as in the 1990s, right? Basically the highest that we've seen since the 1990s when interest rates were quite a bit higher. So this is due to the fact that interest rates have started increasing, but then also we're looking at actual property values that are so much higher than they were back in, well, of course, the 1990s, but even just a two, three year period back. In parallel to that chart, I also think this chart right here is very eye-opening where we can see that as around 2018 in Canada as a whole, uh, well, the number of months required to accumulate the minimum down payment of the average price point of a house, assuming a 10% saving rate based on or relative to the average yearly income has gradually increased. However, both in Vancouver and Toronto, we can see it has just completely skyrocketed where right now we're looking at roughly 300 above 300 months to save up for the average person for the average purchase price of a house. That is a significant amount of time that makes it basically impossible for most first time home buyers to get into the market. That being said though, even if we saw uh, the price point drop by half, let's say 50%, that would still probably require around 200 months for the average person uh, to save up to that value, which represents you know, an unrealistic amount of time that is not feasible for most people. Hey, by the way, I really hope you're enjoying the video. I wanna take a quick second here to mention the full real estate investing course that I recently just launched around a week back or so. Uh, it is a course I've been working on for around six, seven months with two other partners, one of which being Josh Reyes, who's a top realtor in the region here, as well as Mallory Rowan, who's serial entrepreneur has founded multiple six figure businesses. Now together, we've all been investing in real estate for the past four years or so. And we really just want to bring to life a real estate investing course and a product that is extremely complete and broken down into modules. So someone who doesn't necessarily know how to navigate the real estate market, doesn't know where to start and doesn't necessarily understand how this can really help them achieve their own financial goals. We wanted to walk you through every step necessary. So we've broken it down into around eight modules and you will learn absolutely everything you need to know about real estate investing. If you're interested in learning more, comment down below and also check out the top link uh, where you can get a lot more detailed information about each one of the modules, what the course is all about and so forth. So yeah, with that, let's get back to the video. All right, so we've spoken about increased interest rates as well as home affordability. Let's now speak about the sales volume over the past couple of months, which of course does impact market values. According to the Canadian Real Estate Association, the volume of sales that sold in May of 2022 is actually down 20% over May of 2021. Uh, and this is attributed to, yes, both low inventory that we've been seeing over the past two years, and then also really just the number of buyers due to the fact that, well, purchasing power is severely diminished as a result of increased interest rates. Realistically though, this was somewhat predictable and it's actually something that I've spoken about in many previous videos. Seeing inflated house prices in the first place starting to flatten out uh, as demand wouldn't indefinitely remain sky high considering interest rates being higher. Now, interest rates alone aren't the direct cause, but it's kind of like a perfect storm right now where interest rates historically haven't had a huge correlation with property prices. However, due to the fact that they're already inflated so much, at a certain point, the average person considering median household income can just not afford the maintenance and the running costs, I should say, on the average property at a property value above $600,000 with interest rates in the four, five, six percent range. It's just not going to happen. And so that's going to bring down price points. But because inventory is very low and demand is still quite high, this is keeping price points higher than if uh, that was not the case. If it was not the case, we'd be seeing price points coming down significantly. The thing is, the real estate market has just been so hot over the past two years and has been performing significantly above average that right now, any type of shift whatsoever is going to feel like a really big deal and a really massive change. Uh, but realistically, right now, we're just seeing the market flattening and leveling out, really just balancing to a more normal market environment. Quickly circling back to the house price index that we were looking at earlier. Well, uh, in regards to the greater Toronto area specifically, it has fallen by 2.5% in the past three 
three months, which actually might seem like quite a bit, uh, but this is still up 24% compared to where it was only one year ago and 62% compared to where it was three years ago. So looking at this with some perspective really gives us a better idea of the fact that house prices are still very inflated compared to where they were before though. Finally, let's also consider future housing needs and future demand, right? So in Canada, we're looking at 400,000 new immigrants to the country last year in 2021. And for 2022, we're looking at 430,000 immigrant estimates. That's a ton of people who all need housing. So even though most of these individuals are going to be renting at the beginning, beginning, well, there's still a huge shortage in amount of inventory for actual rental units, but then also for new constructions. Also, over time, as more and more people are coming to the country, this is only going to continue keeping demand sky high relative to the current inventory on the market. Right now in Canada, the average homeowner has 75% of equity built into the property. And so considering that uh, borrowing costs right now are a lot higher and moving is going to be extremely high and extremely extremely costly on a month to month basis going and getting a new mortgage. Most people are just going to continue to stay put where they're at right now and maintain their mortgage payments on maybe that 2% uh, rate considering that they got a new property or considering that they refinanced in 2022. So yeah, that's where I think uh, things are standing right now. We're going to continue seeing prices remaining quite high, no crash for at least another you know 24 months. That's really how I see things as of right now. All right, so with all that said, what should we be taking out of this information? The bottom line is that the real estate market that we're finding ourselves in right now is not at all like back in 2007 and in 2008, where investment banks were literally betting against their own clients, which ultimately imploded the entire financial market uh, because everyone and their dog was able to go out and get a loan. That's not the case at all anymore. In fact, there are quite a bit more rules and stress tests in place so that uh, we can avoid finding ourselves in a situation like that once again. So actually going out and getting a mortgage loan is not as simple as it was back in 2007, 2008. And if you've actually applied for a mortgage loan over the past uh, two years or so, you would know that the amount of documentation and proof of income required is actually quite high. Overall, looking at this chart right here, we can see that home prices to average income, that ratio is extremely disproportionate, but that is in parallel to huge demand and again, not enough inventory, which is really what's fueling prices to remain high in the first place. So what do you think? Do you think we're going to be seeing a real estate crash in the midterm right in the last than 12 months or do you think we're going to be seeing a midterm larger recession make sure to comment down below your thoughts let's have a conversation on this i'm open to hearing what all of you have to say about this if you enjoyed the video please take a second drop a like it really helps the channel out and also consider subscribing hitting the bell button i'm going to be uh, going back to a much more frequent posting schedule hoping to hit two to three times per week speaking about stock market investing and the general market overall real estate investing as well as personal finance. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated on those videos. Uh, and also, you know, check out the full real estate investing course as I was speaking about earlier. First link down below in the description. With that said, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.